Hi everybody, it's Olivia, the Cultural Events and Program Administrator at the Lincoln Museum and Cultural Center. Today I'm going to talk to you about making your own homemade dipped candles. Some of you might recognize candle dipping as a favorite activity from Pioneer Day, our annual heritage festival, but today I'm going to show you how to do it in your own home. So there's a few things you need. You need wax and something to melt it in, as well as a wick. Uh, so today I'm using beeswax. Uh, beeswax, when you buy it, comes in a block just like this. So you can purchase beeswax from any of our wonderful local apiaries. You can order it from an online marketplace or an online uh, candle supply store. If you don't have any beeswax, feel free to recycle some old paraffin wax tea lights. Uh, but the first thing you need to do in order to melt your wax is make it smaller. If I were to add a block of wax, uh, like a tea light, or a block as big as this into my double boiler situation over here, it would take an eternity to melt. So what we have to do is we have to make it smaller. So uh, increase the surface area so it melts faster. To do that, I use a cheese grater, but you can also chop it up quite finely with a knife. A uh, cheese grater works uh, great. Um, so I'm just gonna take my blocks of wax and just run it through. It's a bit of a process, but it's well worth it in the end. And you can see I end up with this sort of mozzarella cheese, um, beeswax stuff. Uh, and I can just take this and add it directly into the jar of my welted wax over here. So for the actual candle dipping, uh, what you want to do first is melt your wax. So I've got my wax set up in a double boiler right beside me. So this is a... Um, so this is a pot full of water, and in the water I have a, a mason jar, and that mason jar is filled up with three quarters water and one quarter wax. Now I have it done this way, uh, and you can see. Because wax and water don't mix. Now if I were to fill this whole jar full of wax, it would take an enormous amount. And I need my jar to be um, about as deep as I want my candle to be long. Uh, so having just the wax at the top will work perfectly for dipping candles. So I need my jar with my wax and I also need a jar with cold water and you'll see why in just a moment. Uh, for the wick there's a couple things you can use. So I'm just using this plain cotton string but you could use butcher's twine, uh, shoelace with the cap cut off, scrap fabric, really whatever you want. So I'm just going to take some of my string right here and give it a cut. Now if I were to dip this string right into my wax, you can see that the string is going to curve and I'll end up with a bent candle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bolt and tie it on the bottom. Now this is just going to act as a little weight to keep the string straight. And I'll cut this off later once my candle is um, a little stronger. So you can see I've just tied it on the bottom and now when I dip it in, it will stay straight. There's my first dip. So you can see it coats it right away, but I'm just going to dip it in this cold water to make it dry a little faster uh, because I'm unwilling to wait for it to dry out in the open air. Candles were invented in many cultures all around the world, but it's generally agreed upon that the ancient Romans made the first wicked candles. So they would have made those by rolling up papyrus and dipping it in tallow, which is rendered animal fat. Now tallow remained the standard for candles in Western European countries until about the Middle Ages when beeswax became available. Beeswax is much better because it uh, burns cleaner and it smells nicer. However, it would have been just for the very wealthy. Now that it's about a centimeter thick, I'm just going to take this time to uh, cut off the weight. So very gently cradling my candle, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and cut it right off. My candle's a little shorter right now, but it sure does look cleaner. You could stop now, or you can keep on going till your candle's a lot thicker. I made these with my nephew once, and he made a candle that was uh, as thick as Toonie, which was enormous. 
uh, he just kept on going and made a single mega candle instead of spreading the wax out into several different candles. If you are making these with children, I do recommend that you supervise them the entire time. The wax is extremely hot and will burn you. Uh, I also recommend that you put down a dish towel um, so that any wax splatter uh, stays off of your table. But make sure it's a dish towel that you are willing to part with because once the wax is on it, it is very difficult to get it off. You can see each time I dip, it's getting thicker and thicker. It's a bit of a bumpy candle, but that's kind of what makes this so beautiful. It's got a real handmade quality. You can see here, the candle is just about done. It's looking quite beautiful. I have some wax left, so I'm going to continue to make these candles till the wax is gone. Thank, thank you so much for tuning in to learn about candle dipping. Make sure you hashtag CultureLinkinON to show me your candle dipping experiments. See you soon.